Earthquakes, they're not good for buildings or the people who live in them. This is a money box. But it's empty. It shows the locations of large earthquakes over recent years. Idea, we move away from the places with large earthquakes. Okay. So, no Indonesia, Japan, Eastern Russia, Western United States, Western Canada, Mexico, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Fiji, Samoa, New Zealand, Central China, Taiwan, Northern India, Bangladesh, Italy, Greece, Portugal, Mongolia. Hey, hey, hey. What? I like those places. Okay. Idea. We make it so that the buildings don't fall over. How do we do that? The ground's shaking. We can't do anything to stop that. Yet. So we can try to stop the building from moving by isolating it from the ground at the base. Newton's first law of motion tells us that an object at rest will stay at rest unless a force acts on it. When a building is connected to the ground and the ground moves, the force is transferred through that connection and the building moves as well. If you can prevent the connection from transferring the force, then the building will stay at rest. This is called decoupling. And one of the ways to do this is with flexible connections. You want to see one? Uh, okay, I guess this would be fun. Well, let's go to New Zealand. Aren't we already in New Zealand? This is a lead rubber base isolator at the Museum of New Zealand Te Papa Tongarewa in Wellington. It's made up of layers of rubber separated by steel plates with columns of pure lead running through it. The rubber is flexible to allow movement, the steel plates keep the shape and help support the weight of the building, and the lead is ductile, meaning that it can deform and absorb energy without breaking. The whole building sits on 152 of these base isolators. Neat. Instead of flexible connections, you can use components that slide over one another. Let's go to Japan to see one of these. You're not even going to ask me this? Nara is a magical city filled with very polite deer, but not even the deer can prevent earthquakes from happening. The Okamura Commemorative Museum showcases the technologies used by one construction company, including this system, where the building is separated from the ground by two sets of gears that allow the two planes to move independently of one another in two dimensions. What about the third dimension? I'm glad you asked, little man. Let's go just up the road to Tokyo to see another technology. The Chishuikan by Kozukaikaku Engineering is world first, a mixed-use building that uses three-dimensional base isolation. There are lead rubber base isolators that sit on top of pneumatic suspension units and hydraulic oil dampers that resist motion in the vertical direction. To prevent the building from rocking side to side, the oil between the dampers is hydraulically linked via pipes to the dampers in the opposite corner. This seems like a lot of work. Uh, couldn't you just make a really strong building? You could always forget base isolation and build a super strong building, but that can be super expensive. And everything inside the building will still get shaken around. When you've got fragile contents like vases and people, that's not good. Did you just call me fragile? With really tall buildings, you've got a couple of extra challenges. The building may be too heavy for cost-effective base isolation, and if the shaking is at the building's resonant frequency, then small movements at the base can become really large movements at the top. I've linked to a video in the description that explains why this happens. What? Do you want people to stop watching this and go see it? To combat this, there's another technology that engineers can use. What are tuned mass dampers? How do they work? What's a damper, baby? Let's go to Taiwan to find out. Taipei 101 was the world's tallest building when it opened in 2004. But being in Taipei, Taiwan, it has to put up with both earthquakes and tropical cyclone winds. To counteract these, there's a big old sphere of steel sitting up near the top floor. The sphere is suspended by cables that allow it to swing. The period of the swinging mass is tuned to the resonant frequency of the building so that when the building sways, the mass sways out of sync with the building, stealing some of the kinetic energy. Shock absorbers absorb some of the energy of the swinging sphere, providing the damping. 
This video from Real Engineering has a great hands-on demo of building a tune mass damper and shows the tuning and the damping in action. Wow, you really do want people to stop watching this video. Taipei 101 really loves its tune mass damper. Instead of being hidden away, it's a tourist attraction, complete with questionably cute mascots. When you're going to show people the earthquake machine that you built? What, this one? Yes. Right now. So why don't we build a rig that shows this technology in action? Step one, get a 1998 LEGO Mindstorms robotic kit. Step two, put this piece on here. Now we have a fully functioning base isolation simulator. The motors shift the base back and forth, simulating earthquake movement. The wheels allow the building to move independently of the ground, and the rubber bands return it to its original position. 